Dave Kennedy, Loveland City Manager, and Rob Stanzel, Loveland's Development Director. And uh, they have some uh, exciting news, I think, and I think they'll they'll tell you it's exciting news too. And that, that is that there is a proposal to uh, for commercial development on the former Loveland Bowling Alley sign. So, uh, Dave, you were going to give some background. Sure. To yeah, thanks, Dave. Well, as most people know, the city of Loveland owns the old bowling alley site uh, on Loveland Madeira Road, uh, former Loveland Lanes. The city's owned it since 2014. Uh, in an effort to work towards the development of that project, the city put out what's called RFPs, which stands for Request for Proposals. We started this process back in the fall, shortly after the building was demolished. Uh, we were able to demolish the building uh, through a grant that the city received from Hamilton County. And that lowered our cost on the property and made it uh, more desirable. And once that was down, we felt that the time was right to put the property out for marketing. So the city, through a prepared with uh, Rob, our economic development consultant, we put together a full uh, RFP, request for proposals. And what we were asking for from the developers was to give us a detail on not only what they were going to pay for the property, although that's important, what, how they would develop the property. So over the course of, of a few months of getting these in the hands of various developers, answering a lot of questions, Scott, uh, Rob had many site visits, we ultimately had a deadline where proposals were submitted to the city. Uh, of those proposals, we only received one, but we received one very good proposal uh, from the Hinkle Schuler Group. And before I let Rob go into a little bit more of the details of what the proposal is about and what the company is, I just want to touch on the fact of why we think this is such an important project. Uh, the Lovely Madeira, the Lovely Madeira business, so business corridor, which let's just say is pretty much from New Hope to West Loveland. Let's just use that as our boundaries. It really could use a nice facelift, and I think, for example, Tendertown is a perfect example of what a new, fresh building was able to do with that area. I think we feel that the bowling alley property can be just as effective. Help, help neighboring businesses such as Kroger's and other businesses in that area. So, like I said, it was not just about the money to be received, it was also about the quality of the development. So we received a proposal from Hankel Schuler, and I'm just going to have Rob give you an overview of the details. They, we don't want to leave that out as what they propose to pay for that. So yes, sure. The fact that Loveland is going to get their money back. Yes. The, the, proposal, the proposal included a purchase price of $540,000. Currently, we are right around 539. As I mentioned, the building de demolition, which was around 43,000, was completely funded through a grant, 100% grant. So uh, that is not added on to the overhead cost of the city. All right, well, Dave, thank you. Um, I can uh, attest to the fact that, uh, one, it was an extensive process to approach about 36 commercial developers to send out the RFP that Dave uh, talked about. And the group that was selected by CIC uh, is probably one of the best groups uh, of commercial developers in Greater Cincinnati. They're uh, out of the lab, lab now. The, yes. The people for yeah, Anchor Schuller has done over a million dollars worth of real estate in the property, and they've done projects like uh, Kings Island, they've done uh, the water park, and uh, they've got numerous projects around uh, the tri state area. Their proposal. For this parcel, which is 6.5 acres, uh, is two concepts, and I'll just show you this briefly. The first concept is, if I can hold this up and you might be able to zoom in on it, uh, encompasses two uh, office buildings, uh, retail out in front of about 9,800 square feet, and in an office building, three-story building in the back. So this this is Love on Madeira Road, yeah, there's right. parking here. That's correct. The One building, two buildings. The unique thing about this property is is that although it's 6.5 acres total, you have to be realistic about approximately 2.2 acres of it are pretty much unusable. It's the low-lying area. And it just pretty it, much it falls drops. off. Right. So this footprint is being used within about a four-acre site. It's still very desirable. And the, uh, the renderings, these are a little bit hard to see, but this shows concept A where if you just focus in on this section here, you can see there's a three-story office building in the back, professional office building with retail in the front of about 10,000 square feet. 
overlooking that green space. Yes, in that that, that's the wooded valley. Yes. Now the second concept, by the way, the Hinkle Schiller Group has named this Loveland Point. Yes, Kroger is over here. Kroger's would be right here. Correct. And that's the New Hope Baptist Church would be right here, and this is the castle scaling there. Right. The uh, second that's one proposal. Yeah. Right. The second proposal includes uh, three buildings. And I'll turn it around this way so it's more in it, more towards the actual layout. We've got a one-story office building in the back. We've got uh, a two-story office building. It could be medical arts, professional uh, businesses, and then a one-story retail of about 10,000 square feet with a, a proposal is for a restaurant to have outdoor living hang over the uh, wooded area and overlook that creek. Now, both of these proposals, uh, investment-wise, as far as Hinkle Schuller's total investment, range anywhere from about 7.8 million to 8.9 million. So that's the total amount. The uh, renderings that they've proposed, it's uh, a real classy look. It's high quality. Those are the office buildings there. You can see the retail um, on the right corner, and this is the front uh, streetscape of the retail. And then obviously there's outdoor uh, living area for restaurants or whatever. And their sign identification is very um, classic. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what it looks like. We're real excited. They are doing marketing now for probably the next three to six months. Uh, they have right. to, they have to enter into a purchase agreement um, within. Which is being written. Yes. So what has happened to date? Uh, legally or formally was it's Tuesday's council meeting, the CIC, who owns the property. The Community Improvement Corporation. Community Improvement Corporation. Owns part of the city government. Part of Correct. which is an arm of city government that owns the building met following a council meeting to formally uh, uh, select them as the preferred developer. And what we're doing with that is that is basically giving the Hinkle Schuler Group a 90 day window to know that the city, they have exclusivity with the city and that the city's not going to sell the property in 90 days. During that 90 days, this, they, Hinkle Schuler Group is actively beginning the marketing, trying to find tenants. What the city's doing is we're working on the purchase agreement. So as all roads lead to 90 days from now, we will sit down, have another CIC meeting, and if all goes well, I'll be authorized to execute a sale of the purchase. So we're both doing some homework in those 90 days on both sides. So, and with that, the concept may change just based upon the tenants they get. But this is how this property would probably best lay out. Do you propose that any other public money will be used on this project? Will there be tax abatements or oh, yes, operation? Yes. No, the only, the only tax abatement we have is a CRA. We don't have an abatement on income tax. The city has, a CRA stands for Community Reinvestment Area. And those abatements, which are pretty common up in the commerce part, are used for um, abating real estate prices based on a formula, real estate taxes, based on a formula of construction costs, number of employees, and total payroll. So once we have those numbers, that will dictate it. As far as city money is involved, outside of the city attorney writing, helping me write up the purchase agreement, uh, there won't be any. If a tax abatement is only for three years, the school is just abated. They get they get nothing. If a tax abatement, as soon as a tax abatement extends into year four, a percentage of what is abated must go to the school district, and, and they will confirm that they're getting it. We're talking about property taxes. Property taxes. And then so, any, any employment here will go to the end of the city income tax fund. Yes. So the city, the city out of a project like this, the biggest the biggest reward to the city is a a nice facelift to the Level Madeira overlay. I mean a Level Madeira business corridor. A, uh, a, a, a complement to the other businesses in the area, but also the city will receive income tax on this property. That is not abated. Okay. So, yeah. I think all in all, it's, it's a, a great project and it's a win-win for the city, for the developer, and for the residents in the uh, community. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Okay, thanks, Good Dave. Luck with thanks, Dave. Okay, thanks, and thanks for uh, spending some time. Oh, no problem. All right, beautiful. Thank you.